Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, I want to thank everybody that's supporting us over on Patreon. Indeed. A huge thank you to you. The exclusives going up there on a regular basis, and uh, lots of interesting things happen. Uh, Joni Patrie's last video, she seemed really to stress the uh, everybody get your immune system in as good a shape as it can be because she's feeling there's things coming that are going to be real. Uh, pretty much she f is right in line with what we were getting from the Polish psychic Christoph uh, with, again, something coming. Now, this is the Oropoche virus, potentially fatal disease also referred to as sloth fever. It's made its way to the U.S. On Tuesday, Florida's health department reported 30 cases of this in the state, all linked to travel from Cuba. One case also reported in New York following travel. Um, as we know, you know, lots of uh, lots of mosquitoes have been let out on the world. Not that you know that's the only thing we have to worry about and concern ourselves with. Uh, a lot of them, obviously, genetically modified and coming out of factories. You really can't make up all this craziness that's going on in the world. And there is a lot um, going on for sure. This is a really busy uh, cycle. Here you have Zuckerberg, of course, Facebook meta, just admitting three things. The Biden-Harris administration pressured Facebook into censoring Americans. Facebook censored Americans. Facebook throttled the Hunter Biden laptop story. A uh, big win for free speech. Or is it? You know, again, what is this? what's the real purpose coming out with this right now before election time? Is it perhaps just to stir the, stir the pot and get people aggravated and then trigger something else with whether the election takes place or not? The results or refusal to go along with the results or uh, results that are obviously contrarian to what everybody believes. You know, it, it's all part of the bigger, bigger reset that is underway. Well, a lot of people are talking about this. It's a big buzz. And um, for people who really are deep into the daily news and, and mass media, it, it's important to them because they really feel like they, they, they've, they've won something and now they're feeling like they can challenge, challenge the media and put their stuff out there. They feel like they're being heard. So energetically, that's a good sense. To me, I, I feel like that's some throat chakras being healed there because people feel like, okay, now I can be heard. But like Mike said, What's their purpose? They never do anything this big without something behind it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and Facebook, um, before we had the YouTube channels, I was using Facebook, um, you know, to basically um, promote what I was doing and helping people with um, all sorts of, of issues from physical health to emotional and energetic health and energy work. And they really hated everything alternative. They don't like anything alternative. And so Facebook uh, took away my profile twice and just shut it down on me before I could um, keep track of all my referrals and recommendations. So, yeah, Facebook really screwed me over big time. And, uh, you know, again, this is no big surprise because when you're promoting things like, you know, Reiki and Qigong and also healthy eating and avoiding big F-A-R-M-A, they don't want that because that, that's, that's their moneymaker and they're all part of one system. This is one system. That's the bottom line. Here you see from Politico, Trump indicted again an election subversion case brought by Jack Smith. 36-page indictment secured Tuesday by the special counsel as an attempt to recalibrate the case after the Supreme Court's immunity decision. And it talks about, you know, not being able to keep him from going into the election and all. But again, they are trying to create the conditions in the U.S. for some sort of massive revolution. Revolution of the political system, after all, goes back to the Pluto return. You know, it's going to all be redone. And meanwhile, here you have 45 uh, and his team. 
I'm sure it was done by his team and not himself personally again, uh, giving us a view of Kamala debating Kamala. <laughs> it's hilarious, really. You know, anybody that that thinks that these people make any real decisions, we really have to, you know, smell the smelling salts, have more coffee, you know, because they're, they're not that intelligent. And the sad truth is, often it is the case that, you know, even those that are making critical decisions when it comes to your health and well-being are often not that intelligent. They've just basically been pushed through by the system. Here we go. Everyday prices are too high. Food, rent, gas, back to school clothes. That is called Bidenomics. A loaf of bread costs 50% more today. Ground beef is up almost 50%. There's not much left at the end of the month. Bidenomics is working. The price of housing has gone up. It feels so hard to just be able to get ahead. And we are very proud of Bidenomics. Every it's hilarious, is it not? But again, it's it's the system. And here we go. You know, you have a, somebody over here. The Lord is good. Well, you know, the creator of this universe is an amazingly benevolent being. Um, but if you're talking about, you know, the Old Testament, well, you know, the Gnostics said it was, it was Satan itself. Again, you know, this just shows you how almost hopelessly divided we are. I think in these periods of time, you know, those that are thinking clearly, like you guys, I know you're thinking clearly. You are, you are the exception to the rule because, you know, again, the, the water being fluoridated, all these things that are allowed in our food that aren't allowed in food uh, almost anywhere else in the world, it's, it's, it's hard to think clearly. And then all the frequencies. I mean, there's so much that's up against us. But we have to ride this storm out. And I do think we're, we're Joni, who is a Vedic astrologer, um, is, is saying, get healthy. Get yourself as fit as possible. I couldn't give you any better advice than that, really. Yeah, I mean, if she's saying it and, it, and it's not just her, like Mike said, it's Christoph and our family members too, having that urge to get their, you know, get your gut healthy, your gut plays into this, like so big, your immune system, uh, your gut, gut health, do what you can to give yourself a boost, give yourself a chance, you know, kind of, uh, what I do, I like to take vitamin C daily and I make sure I keep that in my system. It, it's a simple thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm drinking my lemon water all day long. I'm really kind of boring. But, you know, my immune system, that's the excitement. That's what I work on. Yes. And, uh, you know, the guides gave us the recommendation of basically 72 hours of fasting a week to be something to shoot for. Now, if that's like having one meal three days a week, if it's something, again, everybody's in a different situation. If, if you're still, and I know you guys won't be, but living off of McDonald's and Burger King and all the fast foods, oh, what a shock to the system it would be to actually get your body to start to purge because we are being over-toxified to the point where, obviously, you know, we can see this. People are dropping from uh, cancers everywhere you look. It's just, you know, there is a massive, massive um, die-off going on on the planet right now. The excess death rates are just through the roof. And listen to the actual words here from Starmer and uh, Schultz. This treaty is part of a wider reset. Oh, it sure is. You know, in case you missed that. This treaty is part of a wider reset. It's a very wide reset. This planet sees these resets all the time. I keep sharing with you um, the book, The Giant Cities of Bashan. Uh, again, this book was researched in the 1850s and 1860s, a part of expeditions to the Holy Land, but the Holy Land... Um, not the places where everybody always goes. Uh, some of the more uh, obscure places that are mentioned in, in the Bible. Um, and 
looking at what's there. And the amazing, the thing that really amazed this uh, European is that there are cities everywhere that are just completely empty, completely empty. Sometimes, you know, there's rubble. Other times there's structures at that point in time, structures, but empty. He was mentioning this one uh, town that they came upon. He said it could have housed 500 uh, families comfortably and you would have had your choice of what house you want. There's houses in perfect shape. The streets are still in perfect shape at that point in time. And where is everybody? They're not there. What would have taken them out? It, because again, not all the places are rubble. The turning the places into rubble is like, in some cases, it seems to be an afterthought. It's like sweeping stuff under the rug, if you know what I mean. What took out all those people? Well, likely they caught something and weren't feeling too well. Mm -hmm. And that continues on, <clears throat> and it's what they do. And it goes back into the ancient texts as well. They, um, <laughs> you know, right now what I feel is they're just weakening people. They're weakening people to the point they they can't stand up to anything so even just you know a cold enough breeze is going to weaken their immune system and they're going to get something you know release the smallest bug and it doesn't even have to be all that contagious it really doesn't it's just the we, immune system has to be weakened that's that's what i see so as i was i was going to say like if you even just picked that you were going to have a dinner at at six o'clock and that was going to be, you know, nice, well-rounded and nutritious. But just the one meal a day thing can work. If it was like an every other day, one meal a day, that gives your body, you know, 22, 23, 24 hours to just detox and purge. Because your body won't shift into that mode uh, until there's a certain period of time. You know, about 16 hours and your body will start to really... Uh, work on on purging and removing things that it needs to remove most of what we see is toxic overload so again we are going to be getting into some really more challenging times and i do think uh, it's knocking on the doorstep here you have ukraine saying Zelensky announced this they developed and tested their own homegrown ballistic missile and so you know, again, uh, the threat is evolving, and we already seen in multiple incursions into Russia by Ukraine, with uh, you know NATO, U.S., U.K., uh, France equipment. And what is this all about? It's it's all about you know how, in retrospect, the Third World War came to be. Well, we all know this happened, that happened, this happened. And then perhaps, you know, telegraphing some sort of major strike using missiles where there will be a retaliatory strike. So, you know, again, not that it's going to be nuclear war Armageddon, but, you know, again, this is part of that greater reset that's underway. As this is saying, what are they going to do? Are they going to hit Moscow and St. Petersburg, the two most populous cities? In, in Russia, and what will the retaliation look like? Um, again, I, I think uh, Christoph, uh, in his work, he sees 2028 um, that there's sort of a, a stopping in the war, but not that there's been any official um, treaty or anything like that, um, but he does see that, that Russia... Uh, suffers you know from whatever strike comes and even has like a new day of mourning um, like a new holiday and put in effect it's more of a day of mourning remembering uh, the strike now some have said well who, who really is this Christoph guy well he he's worked with authorities to find missing people he's worked with the police and uh, he does seem to be gifted he does not feel um, to us like he's part of the system um you know and it, we tend to get very strong signals from those that are obviously in the system and pushing the system's narrative it really does feel um kind of obvious and it and we don't really feel that with him and we don't feel that with with Joni either this is why we bring them up the um future forecasters also pick up some sort of very major event um, that could be uh, 
it could be a variety of different things in the time period between 2026 and 2028. They were saying, though, from this point until uh, 2028, 2029, they're picking on some sort of major event that will also do with water and massive flooding. Um, and the question is, you know, will it be something that's triggered and they themselves were bringing up, uh, what could it be possibly triggered by bombs under fault lines and stuff like we've heard? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's always, to me, felt like something that was in the planning. We've, we've had so much come through about using these tsunami bombs as a technology. And then uh, Christoph, in the last video that was translated to English, he's seeing some sort of radiological disaster coming. And here you have at the same time, we have Ukraine announcing it's going to build a new, new nuclear power plant with four American Westinghouse reactors. Uh, this is, you know, the timing of this. This is crazy again. But the system is crazy. Interesting to note, uh, just as in the case of the Malibu anomaly that appeared to have been scrubbed from Google Earth earlier this year. Yeah, I mean, I pointed out that base going back to well, like 2017, 2018. Uh, right off the coast of Malibu, you could see this shelf and it really looked like there was an entrance into the inner Earth. And um, there was even anomalous objects that had been spotted coming from this area. Well, they're posting out this uh, base in Guadalupe, and it's interesting. Guadalupe, again, off the coast of Mexico. And here you have another person talking about this connection between 2004 Nimitz and the 2019 Southern California UAP Tic Tac events. In 2004, groups of UAPs disappeared from radar right above Guadalupe Island. In 2019, after hovering around the USS Paul Hamilton, a group of UAP departed on a heading to the exact same location again. Um, and this Jose is saying the U.S. Navy confirms that the Mexican waters of Guadalupe Island is the point of origin where the ET craft are launched from to harass U.S. ships, as well as to retreat to hide after they enter our atmosphere making it a clandestine ET base. Very curious, you know, but when you look over here, I was asking Cindy to feel into this area. I mean, for one, along the coastlines above it, we pointed out before a lot of curious structures. Below it, a lot of curious structures. In fact, all along the west coast um, of North America and down into Central America, there's a lot of really weird anomalous uh, structures underneath the water. And she, um, she was feeling something over in this area that feels like it's um, kind of being hidden. Well, yeah, I mean, this area right here, if I could get the uh, mouse on it, this thing right here, it feels like a, a place, a port where... Uh, machines go where things just sort of sit maybe they get worked on it just feels so active right where I'm circling that mouse and the whole area it I just feel something dark there it's not not a good feeling but mainly this it feels like they're using a lot of good, really good camouflage here too but there's something right under there that my gut will not let me waver from well, again, there's Native American legends that uh, Los Angeles, City of Angels, couldn't be any farther from that truth as it was built purposefully right on top of a reptilian base. Yeah. This is Native American legends. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, there's just a lot of information there. So this is not surprising. It's just, you know, it's, I guess, more obvious. It's just becoming more obvious. Again, I, I would say, you know, go into the legends uh, of the local people and and see what they say. Um, you know, I had a friend that was from Peru and he was a martial arts instructor and a personal trainer. And, you know, I, I told him, oh, boy, I was well, always want to go to Peru and explore the areas. And, and he said, yeah, well, you know, we'd see UFOs. And he said, you know what, they, they go down into this certain area and they literally go through what looks to be um, rock, you know, just like a stone wall. But in fact, it's a portal and they go into inner earth. 
And they know this. I mean, the indigenous people in the area know this. It, it, it's just a given. And they will see sometimes uh, grays. They'll even see reptilian beings sometimes and some that look humanoid. You know, this is off the uh, coast of Costa Rica. I've shown this many times. How do you get all these straight lines? This this looks just like what you would see with a big airport. You know, you would see these runways that... You know, uh, what was this used for? This is down, you know, deep underneath the ocean. And there's so many interesting places. You know, you have a lot of little crisscross lines. Are they just mountain ridges? Some may be. But when you go up higher, you know, we were we were showing all these. And there's some over there, too, um, off the Cayman Islands, north of the Cayman Islands. We were showing, you know, over in here too, uh, a lot of grid work and and things that look like structures. I mean, it's just bizarre, you know. There's all these weird patterns. What's really going on here? What what sort of grid work is this? Is this some sort of harp type array? You know, people have brought that up. I think Mr. MBB has talked about harp arrays underwater in various areas. Oh man, there's so much happening in our in our oceans, underneath our oceans. And then you have, you know, all the legends of, well, you have Poseidon ruling here, you have Zeus ruling here. These these are again Anunnaki and, and Anunnaki and um, hybrids that, that we're talking about when we talk about the gods. You know, this is part of that big reveal they're they're not <laughs> they're ets that's what you're talking about they're conquerors and you find this stuff everywhere you look you know um you will find it again off the coast of florida there's anomalous um structures and patterns and grids you know this this again looks a little too too straight for it to be nature um, but then at the same time, off of uh, New Orleans, we, we, we have pyramid that was found, too, uh, over in, in this area, you know, and we could see some, some curious structures down there, but you can't see the pyramid from here. Um, but, you know, it's same about three or four years ago, there was a big news article that was talking about a pyramid structure uh, that, again, was found just off the coast. And at the same time, you know, you go up a, a little bit higher and, you know, it, you'll find that one of the biggest um, structures as far as it, it looks shaped like Stonehenge is, is, is actually over in this area. But it's much bigger than Stonehenge. In fact, it's the biggest one of its kind that we see in, in either North or South America. So, you know, anomalous items, they're, they're always all over. And they'll just keep telling you it's just satellites coming down. It's, it's, it's rockets. It's SpaceX. Um, you know, now, now you're going to have China that's trying to catch up to SpaceX with the amount of satellites, you know, circling us. So it, it just brings you opportunity to say, you know, ah, that was nothing. Don't even think anything about it. It, it wasn't like an extraterrestrial ship that was shot. No, nothing to see here. It's just, you know, some stuff that's breaking up in the sky and there's really n nothing to it, <laughs> you know. But when when I did see this, a lot of times when I see these, I uh, get the information that it's actually parts of a ship that are broken off a ship that we cannot see because there is uh, wars going on above us that we're not privy to. But this one... This one was a little bit different. This is something, it's a, it's some type of a being, some type of a ship, some type of something that I can't quite put my finger on coming into our world. It, it's, it was really different and uh, not sure, but it's not, you know, not what people think it is. So I'm seeing some kind of being there. So, you know, this is a conversation saying, what are the orbs that turn up when people meditate and ask for something to reveal itself? We, we did a video, I don't know, maybe about six months ago out in the backyard and Cindy was, and we were both focusing on drawing orbs in and, and yeah, we could draw orbs in at will because consciousness is everywhere. It's always everywhere. You know, when you look to the legends uh, that Tolkien uh, took as inspiration for uh, all his hobbit hobbitry, <laughs> uh, 
Oh, absolutely. You know, some some of those names that he even used are, are taken directly from uh, different mythologies, Norse mythologies and others. But the elves and other beings that were m taken to be more magical than us leaving our realm, you know, that's again a remembrance of, of us now being kind of in a quarantine because we weren't always in this quarantine and and we did interact with non-human beings on on a regular basis every single day it was no big deal now you can as your light body becomes activated your pineal glands functioning you yourself can can uh communicate with what you would take to be nature spirits and many of you guys do it now you know, in fact, some of our, our dear loved ones are <laughs> are now human, but we're nature spirits. And the reality is that is a normal progression of the soul as the soul evolves. You, 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 your, your soul, your consciousness um, is not created the first go round as, as a human. It, it's part of an evolution of the soul which transmigrates from one vehicle to a next. Most souls typically start as a, a simple spark of consciousness that is, get, give, that is given a job of taking care of something in nature, like a flower, a tree, a plant, typically, um, to, to nature, uh, to take care of and nurture nature. And then as we incarnate from, from one aspect uh, one vehicle of, of consciousness to another, we grow and we learn. So by the time we are taking uh, human bodies as vehicles, you know, you're deep into your training, uh, your soul growth training. Right. So as we build our energy in the human vehicles, so much becomes a reality around us as far as us and our energy and what our energy calls and what we can do in strengthening that energy around us, um, having having more of a conversation with nature, having more of a conversation with the elementals, um, having more of a conversation with the universe. You know, if there's something that you are in need of, that conversation becomes uh, brighter and stronger. And we just did a video yesterday on, you know, what does it mean to have an activated light body? And it means a lot. It means that your presence in this universe, the conversation that is coming and going is much stronger and much louder. And it, it's just different. Your life will change. It'll really change. I mean, <laughs> some, some good things, some not so good things. So it's not anything you just want to jump in and and do uh for fun there's a preparation for it and it you know it's not easy for a reason so there's a lot you can do with it there's a lot of blessings to be sent and a lot of blessings to be received when you activate that light body yes so this is a video that cindy was was talking about and again if you haven't subscribed to hearts home uh that's the newest channel um, it, it doesn't get daily activity like these other ones, um, but it has a, a great playlist there. And if you want to deep dive into uh, true spirituality without the dogma, uh, then definitely come and join us over there, um, as well as the ambient music list, which can uh, raise your frequency up as well as just um, having the ambient music going at 432 hertz. Again, the Rockefellers uh, twisted and had everything um, tuned to 440 uh, as far as middle C goes. Uh, 432 is, is more harmonious with nature and can actually uh, lift your frequency up. And so we tune the 432 as opposed to 440 it's another way in which the uh, control system distorts things and keeps people off center but activating the light body but light body merkaba is is the absolute key uh, i mean you know it's it, these are the things that really kind of boggle my mind is you know we could see everything going on in this world uh which is all about lowering our frequencies and yet most of the world is still trapped in uh, one of the matrixes that the dark matrix has laid out for them so that they don't really understand what's going. 
Uh, and when you activate and work on your, your light body through uh, using mantras, using uh, qigong, reiki, yoga, these techniques which have been taught to be uh, by the fundamentalist mindset, uh, things that are you should avoid because, you know, fearful of. We've actually had people uh, that were fearful of having their chakras open because they were afraid that if their chakras were open, they could be demonically possessed, when it's actually when your chakras are closed that you're going to be demonically possessed. You know, this is the, the, what the system does. It, it teaches you up is down, down is up, you know, good is bad and bad is good. It's completely inverse of, of what the reality truly is. Um, so do go and uh, check check this out and subscribe over to Heart's Home. Of course, everything is also on uh, Patreon, but here you do have a playlist that could just make it a, a little bit easier to bop from one thing uh, to another. And so, you know, again, we, we welcome you guys to go and join us over there. You know, this is what we should be doing. We should be dancing and playing and interacting with nature. We shouldn't be working our lives away as slaves for a system, you know, being taxed to where, you know, say 40 to 50 percent of your time is, is just simply occupied with making money to pay the system to, you know, their bribes because taxation is nothing but legalized bribery as the same thing is with their political system. It's all legalized bribery. You know, they just have different terms for it. No, we got to think outside of the box. This system is is not what was intended by the creator. And, you know, to take again some of the terms like the uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know, what the system is really saying is you better fear the system or we're going to kick you in the ass. And they do all the time. They, they spray our skies. They, they hit us with toxic frequencies. They poison our food. You know, they get us believing in their systems, uh, which literally go about eroding our ability to think clearly and to have a healthy, vibrant life. There's only one problem. It's the system. Eliminate the system. And we're all going to be singing zippity doo dah all day. <laughs> we will. Life would be a lot better if, you know, the system were not supported the way it is. But for right now, that's that's what we have. And we have to find a way to work through it find a way to work around it, uh, find a way to be happy despite that, because it's it's in our face constantly. And, you know, those people who are, you know, really highlighting the system and working with the system, they're highly rewarded. They are very highly rewarded. And to, to point out uh, the things in the system that are not so advantageous, um, well, that's definitely not rewarded. And that's where you guys come in to help help support us in trying to make the world different, trying to make it better, trying to give regular people a chance to live a good life. We thank you. Absolutely. Look forward to your comments. Thank you for your support. May you all be blessed and kept safe and healthy in these times. Namaste.